you know who it is. It's Tracy Lene, because you've been here before, and thank you for coming back again. And if it's your first time here, you found me. We found each other. We're family now. I read books and add my commentary. This is the second book I've read. The first one was The Game of Life and How to Play It. This book is The Four Agreements. We've already been through The Four Agreements, but you can scroll back over the videos and start from the beginning. And you don't have to like sit and just stare at me. You can be cleaning, um, driving, doing crafting, and just have it on in the background and just picking up on it. I decided to do this because a while ago, God told me to do it, and I didn't do it. But now I'm going to do it. This ain't audible, though. I'm going to add my commentary. Remember the four agreements if you've been with me. The first one is to be impeccable with your word. The second one is to not take anything personal. The third one is to don't make any assumptions. And the fourth one is to do your best at everything. So we've gone through the agreements. And now Mr. Don Miguel Ruiz is just showing us how we can get to that space where we can adopt those four agreements into our life permanently. I am not perfect at it, but I do my best at it every single day. Today, I had an opportunity to take something personally and I didn't do it, which then kind of annoyed the person because they were purposely trying to poke the bear. But don't no bear live here no more, boo. There's no bear here. So you're not poking anything but yourself. Anywho, so let's get right into it. We are in the sixth chapter, A Toltec Path to Freedom is the name of the chapter. One function of the brain is to trans to transform material energy into emotional energy. Our brain is the factory of the emotions. And we have said that the main function of the mind is to dream. The Toltecs believe that the parasite, the judge, the victim, and the belief system has control of your mind. It controls your personal dream. The parasite dreams through your mind and lives its life through your body. It survives on the emotions that come from fear and thrives on drama and suffering. The freedom we seek is to use our own mind and body to live our own life instead of the life of the belief system. When we discover that the mind is controlled by the judge and the victim and the real us is in the corner, we have just two choices. One choice is to keep living the way we are, to surrender to the judge and the victim, to keep living in the dream of the planet. The second choice is to do what we do as children when parents try to domesticate us. We can rebel and say no. We can declare a war against the parasite, a war against the judge and the victim, a war for our independence, a war for the right to use our own mind and our own brain. That is why in all the shamic traditions in America, from Canada to Argentina, people call themselves warriors because they are in a war against the parasite in the mind. That is the real meaning of a warrior. The warrior is one who rebels against the invasion of the parasite. The warrior rebels and declares a war. But to be a warrior doesn't mean that we always win the war. We may win or we may lose, but we always do our best and at least we have a chance to be free again. Never give up. I have been trying to be successful at creating things since 2013. And the success that I'm looking for, I'm talking about, is financial freedom through what I do. And it hasn't happened yet. These earrings, y'all like them? I think they're gorgeous. I make jewelry. I make phone cases journals. I used to sew a lot. Don't sew so much anymore. Maybe I'll get back to it. Actually, next year, I'm probably going to be teaching family consumer sciences, maybe, and that may, I'll be doing some sewing. I'll teach those children how to sew. Anywho, the warrior re rebels and declares a war, but to be a warrior doesn't mean we always win the war. We may win or we may lose, but we always do our best, and at least we have a chance to be free again. Choosing this path gives us at the very least dignity of rebellion and ensures that we will not be the helpless victims of our own whimsical emotions or the poisonous emotions of others. Even if we succumb to the enemy, the parasite, we will not be among those victims who would not fight back. At best, being a warrior gives us an opportunity to transcend the dream of the planet and to change our personal dream and a dream we call heaven. Just like hell, heaven is a place that exists within our mind. It is a place of joy, a place where we are happy, where we are free to love and to be who we really are. We can reach heaven while we are alive. I'm going to say that again. We can reach heaven while we are alive. We don't have to wait until we die. God is always present and the kingdom of heaven is everywhere. 
But first, we need to have the eyes and ears to see and hear that truth. We need to be free of the parasite. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all its righteousness, and all else will be added unto you. So the Bible wouldn't say, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven if the kingdom of heaven was after you die. It's telling you to seek the kingdom of heaven because it's here, right where we are. It's in our hearts, it's in our minds, it's in our souls, it's in everything. The kingdom of heaven, when you seek it right here, where we are, not after you die and go to the sweet by and by in the upper room, but seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all its righteousness and all else will be added unto you. Meaning when you go looking for God and all the things of God, you'll get the money because God owns the money, baby. You'll get the, the career. You'll get the husband or the wife or the beautiful, wonderful children. Yes, you will have issues because issues are a part of life. We came here for that. The parasite can be compared to a monster with a thousand heads. Every head of the parasite is one of the fears that we have. If we want to be free, we have to destroy the parasite. One solution is to attack the parasite head by head, which means we face our fears one by one. This is a slow process, but it works. Every time we face one of the fears, we are a little more free. A second approach is to stop feeding the parasite. If we don't give the parasite any food, we kill the parasite by starvation. To do this, we have to gain control of our emotions. We have to refrain from fueling the emotion that comes from fear. This is easy to say, but it's very difficult to do. It is difficult because the judge and the victim control our mind. A third solution is called the initiation of the dead. The initiation of the dead is found in many traditions and esoteric schools around the world. We find it in Egypt, India, Greece, and America. This is the symbolic death which kills the parasite without harming our physical body. When we die, symbolically, the parasite has to die. That's why Jesus tells you that you have to die first in order to see the key. You have to die. It means die to yourself, die to your Lord desires. This is faster than the first two solutions, but it's even more difficult to do. We need a great deal of courage to face the angel of death. We need to be very strong. Let's take a closer look at each of these solutions. So... I was talking to a friend before and we were talking about just not being afraid of dying itself, but the method. Like, I'm not afraid to die, but how am I going to die? Is it going to be real painful? Is I'm going to hurt a whole lot and then a year later die? So the death isn't the scary part. It's the method. And when you get rid of those fears, one second. We had our last year of school. And when we see the buses off and we're waving and screaming, my voice got a little, a little uh, low. So when they were leaving out of the school, I was going, thank you. Thank you so very much for attending Falling Creek Middle School. We hope you've enjoyed your stay. Have a wonderful day. Um, come back and see us again. You can go out this way. And one of the girls is like, I give it two stars. <laughs> it was cute. Anyhow, a sec. Okay. We're talking about the art of transformation, the dream of the second intention. We have learned that the dream you are living now is the result of the outside dream hooking your attention and feeding all of your beliefs. The process of domestication be can be called the dream of first attention because it was how your attention was used for the first time to create the first dream of your life. One way to change your beliefs is to focus your attention on all those agreements and beliefs and change the agreement with yourself. And doing this, you are using your attention for the second time thus creating the dream of the second attention or the new dream. The difference is that you are no longer innocent. When you were a child, this was not true. You didn't have a choice, but you are no longer a child. Let me say that again. You are no longer a child. Now it is up to you to choose what to believe and what not to believe. You can choose to believe in anything that includes believing in yourself. The first step is to become aware of the fog that is in your mind. You must become aware that you are dreaming all the time. Only with the awareness do you have the possibility of transforming your dream. If you have the awareness that the whole drama of your life is the result of what you believe and what you believe is not real, then you can begin to change it. However, to really change your beliefs, you need to focus your attention on what it is that you want to change. You have to know which agreements you want to change before you can change them. So the next step is to develop awareness of all the self-limiting, fear-based beliefs that make you unhappy. You take an inventory of all that you believe, all your agreements, and through this process, you begin the transformation. 
The Toltecs calls this the art of transformation, and it is a whole mastery. You achieve the mastery of transformation by changing the fear-based agreements that make you suffer and reprogramming your own mind in your own way. One of the ways to do this is to explore and adopt alternative beliefs such as the four agreements. One, be impeccable with your word. Two, don't take anything personal. Three, don't make any assumptions. And four, do your best at everything. The, the decision to adopt the four agreements is a declaration of war to regain your freedom from the parasite. The four agreements offer the possibility of ending the emotional pain, which can open the door for you to enjoy your life and begin a new dream. It is up to you to explore the possibilities of your dream if you are interested. The four agreements were created to assist you in the art of transformation to help you break the limiting agreements, gain more personal power, and become stronger. The stronger you get, the more agreements you can break until the moment comes when you make it to the core of all those agreements. And you have to make the choice. Nobody is going to come and save you. Jesus left a teaching. Muhammad left a teaching. Buddha left a teaching. The Yorubas left a teaching. The Jewish, the Talmud is a teaching. But if you don't pick it up and read it and do for yourself what it is saying, doing, tapping, meditation, all of these tools, you are not going to change. Nothing is going to change outside of you. Everything changes inside of you. You are the master of it all. The beauty of it is then you're in control. You don't have to wait for anybody else to come along and save you. You can save yourself. You're the only person that can save you, honestly. Going to the core of those agreements is what is called going into the desert. When you go into the desert, you meet your demons face to face. After coming out of the desert, all those demons become angels. Practicing the four new agreements is a big act of power. Breaking the spell of negative magic in your mind requires great personal power. Every time you break an agreement, you gain extra power. You start by breaking, breaking agreements that are very small and require less power. As those smaller agreements are broken, your personal power will increase until you reach a point where you can finally face the big demons in your mind. For example, the little girl who was told not to sing is now 20 years old and she still does not sing. One way she can overcome the belief that her voice is ugly is to say, okay, I will try to sing even if I do sing badly. <laughs> Let's talk about this little girl because this little girl didn't really believe she could sing because all it took us for one time for her to give it up. She didn't go to her mother and say, mom, that hurt my feelings because I really want to sing so her mother could correct herself. She just gave up. I find people like that a lot in middle school. When you tell them to something once they shut down and then they want you to beg them to open back up again and I'm not doing that I'm not begging you to open back up again because that's not my responsibility it's not my job it's not my responsibility and frankly you just want to be a victim you want to the pity party this little girl had to have wanted that she was singing all this time her mother tells her one time her voice is ugly and she just stopped singing and we y'all would say oh it's the mother's fault because the mother shouldn't have told mm. The mother shouldn't have told her that. No, the mother should not have, but the mother ain't perfect, damn it. None of us are. So she told her one time, and all of a sudden now you're not singing again. It's like you want to punish the mother. You're only punishing yourself. Okay, I would try to sing, even if I do sing badly. Then she can pretend that someone is clapping and telling her, oh, that was beautiful. This may break the agreement a teeny, teeny bit, but it will still be there. However, she now has a little more power and courage to try again and again until finally she breaks that agreement. That's the one way out of the dream of hell. But for every agreement you break that makes you suffer, you will need to replace it with a new agreement that makes you happy. This will keep the old agreement from coming back. If you occupy the same space with a new agreement, then the old agreement is gone forever and in its place is the new agreement. That's the same thing with food. If you decide you're not going to eat a particular food, find a food that you love that's healthy and good for you and replace it with that. And every time you t think of that food that you know you don't want to eat anymore, eat that food that you can eat that's good and healthy. And eventually it's going to click in your brain. We might as well enjoy this damn rice cake because this helper is not eating Doritos no more. We ain't getting no more Doritos, y'all. So she over eating these poppers. Hmm. All right. These poppers are all right. 
And then eventually, they good. I like these poppers because your brain just wants something different. It wants the, that crunch and that salt. And so you change that. And so once you reprogram your brain and say, listen, I'm giving you these poppers. I'm not giving you Doritos. You know, the brain will say, damn, I did like Doritos, but poppers is good. Try it. Just try it. Try something different. And I'm not talking about me necessarily with the Doritos, I never really like Doritos. I'm more of a sour cream and onion chip girl. And I switched from the sour cream and onion chips to the sour cream and onion poppers. And they are good. Yes, they is. That's one way out of the dream of hell. Okay, I'm going to do that. This will keep the old agreements from coming back. If you occupy the same space with the new agreement, then the old agreement is gone forever. And its place is the new agreement. There are many strong beliefs in the mind that can make this process look hopeless. This is why you need to go step by step and be patient with yourself because this is a slow process. Be patient with yourself always. Stop beating yourself up. Love on yourself the same way you want to love on some man or some woman that you're with. Treat yourself with that dignity and respect because when you actually treat yourself with dignity and respect, what always happens is it comes back to you. When you are in a relationship and the person does not have respect for you, if you're in that relationship for more than a day, it's because you don't have respect for you. When you learn to respect yourself, the people who don't respect you will go by the wayside. They will be down by the riverside and you don't have to go there. You can go sit on the dock of the bay, but don't waste no time. I mean, I even know that reference to Sam Cooke. Sitting on the dock of the bay. Wait, wait, wait in the tide, roll away. There are many strong beliefs in the mind that can make this process look hopeless. Okay, we did that. The way you are living now is the, the result of many years of domestication. You cannot expect to break the domestication in one day. Breaking agreements is very difficult because we put the power of the word, which is the power of our will, into every agreement we have made. We need the same amount of power to change an agreement. We cannot change an agreement with less power than we use to make the agreement. So if you took a lot of power to make an agreement, it's going to take that power to get that agreement gone. And it's it's like you're going to have to really like feel it. I was watching the movie Wish on Disney. I stopped watching it. I fell asleep because it was late. And I'm going to watch it this weekend. Because that we, we, last day of school for children was today but we have to go two more days next week. Now I'm looking forward to it. I really do love my job. I do. I am in school now, if you don't know, to become an educator. So I've been fortunate and blessed to be at a school that treats me like one of their own. I love it and helps me learn more and grow more. And while I'm in a different position, now I'm teaching science. I started out teaching STEM, which is a science and technology. Then they needed the science, sixth grade science teacher um, we decided to leave and so I took over for that and I, I like it but I would prefer something in my space like the drama or the family consumer sciences because I can do those things with the so that's what I just love it so I, I just want to say that anyway let me go back we need the same amount of power to change an agreement. We cannot change an agreement with less power than we use to make the agreement. And almost all our personal power is invested in keeping the agreement we have with ourselves. We don't like to be wrong. We would rather sit in misery and be right than to say, this relationship ain't working. Let me go ahead and slide and accept my, my responsibility. Or I don't like this house. Mm, nah, I shouldn't have rented this one. I need to move on. Or this car, not really my cup of tea. We'll say, you better be grateful for everything you have. You can be grateful and want change. You can be grateful for the car you have and want a new car. You can be grateful for the few dollars in your bank account and want millions. The two can occupy the space at the same time. So I blame people tell you they can't because they can't. You don't have to believe me either. Try to think so. That's because our agreements are actually like a strong addiction. That relationship feeds the part of you that makes you feel like you ain't shit anyway. So this man or woman treating you like you ain't shit anyway feels good. That's what you know. So that's what you hold on to. We are addicted to being the way we are. We are addicted to anger, jealousy, and self-pity. You ever known somebody that just get mad just because they can get mad? 
Like, they just get mad because they woke up. They get mad because they go to sleep. They get mad because the grass is green. They get mad because it's raining. They get mad when it's sunny. They get mad when you walk too hard. They get mad when you walk too soft. They get mad when you look at them. They get mad when you don't look at them. They get mad if you say something nice. They get mad if you say something mean. They just mad all the damn time. Just miserable and pitiful and sad. That's a sad person. Pray for them. Don't pray on them. Pray for them. Addicted to jealousies and self-pity. We're addicted to the beliefs that tells that us, I'm not good enough. I'm not intelligent enough. Why even try? Other people would do it because they're better than me. I was talking to another adult and she's wanted a pity party and I just wasn't having it. I'm like, I ain't doing this pity party thing. So she's like, yeah, because, you know, I didn't get to finish school. I was telling her, you know, I'm in, you know, subbing and long-term subs, you know, like, taking the on um, position on and how much I'm loving it and I'm back in school to finish and you know I'm gonna you know be working full time at this and and she was like yeah I would do it but I'm just not smart enough girl bye I said yes you are no I'm not I'm not gonna be able to do that um so I can't do this and I can't do that and I'm not gonna be able to do that and I tried to do this but what happened come to find out what had happened was and I'm like oh god so finally I said I'm on my walk and I really got to keep walking but I just want to say this to you you really need to stop shooting all over yourself. You really need to stop blaming yourself for everything and finding fault or staying in self-pity because you made the agreement and you, as I'm reading the book, and you don't need to do that. She said, yeah, you're right, but went right back two seconds later to talking about how life ain't fair. I told her what my friend told me was well, not called fair. It's called life. If it was more fair. It'd be called fair. It's not. It's called life. All of these old agreements which rule our dream of life are the result of repeating them over and over again. Therefore, to adopt the four agreements, you need to put repetition in action. Practicing the new agreements in your life is how you best become better. Repetition make the master. You know how y'all like to get tattoos of everything? Get the four agreements tatted right here. So when you're doing, you about to start talking shit about yourself, you always drop your head down because you talk, oh, woe is me. It's a, oh. Nah, be impeccable with my word. Don't take anything personal. Don't make any assumptions. Do my best at everything. I'm good. I'm back. I'm thinking about doing that just so y'all know. I only have two tattoos. Both of them aren't. The one is really dull now. I'm going to replace it with like some butterflies. And the one on my back that me and my best friend have, that guy didn't know what he was doing. And you can't even read it. So we're going to get something else eventually. That's it. Repetition makes the master. This, the discipline of the warrior controlling your own behavior. Control yourself. I tell my children that in school all the time. Control yourself. Uh huh. Control yourself. But she hit me. Control yourself. But Miss Beckwith, control yourself. Now I do it so much. I go, I know Miss Beckwith control myself, but I can't. Yes, you can. You're deciding not to. You're making a choice. Why are you making that choice? And it calms them down. Those that aren't. That's not Amazon. Those that aren't on level 100, calm down. Those that are already on level 100, I can't reach them anyway. I do my best. That's all. Imagine that you awake early one morning, overflowing with enthusiasm for the day. You feel good. You are happy and have plenty of energy to face the day. Then at breakfast, you have a big fight with your spouse and a flood of emotions come out. You get mad and in the emotion of anger, you spend a lot of personal power. After the fight, you feel drained and you just want to go and cry. In fact, you feel so tired that you go to your room, collapse, and try to recover. You spend the day wrapped up in your emotions. You have no energy to keep going. You just want to walk away from everything. This morning, I had a little girl. She came in the classroom. She was just determined to be mad. The little girl made her mad on the bus because she told the other little boy that she liked him last year, but she don't like him this year. And why would she tell him that? And I'm never speaking to her again. And then she's talking to her. I said, I thought you said you're never speaking to her again. Do you know what that means to say never speaking to somebody again? It means you're not talking to her now. You talk to her. No, because I just want to know why she did it. I said, well, she just told you why she did it. Because she wanted to do it. Yeah, but why would she do that? Because she wanted to do it. She told you that twice. Like, I've heard her say it twice. Now, I need to take attendance to sit down. She's like, no, but I'm just mad. And, I, da, 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 and I'm going to have a bad day. I said, you most certainly am. You're going to have a bad day. I said, you most certainly are. You're going to have a bad day because you just said it. And you won't let this go. She told you she did it because she did it. And why does it matter if you don't like him this year? Because I don't want him thinking I liked him last year. I said, girl, if you want to go sit down somewhere and, and, and get out of my face with this foolishness. That was last year. 
you liked him last year. I said, the real issue is he didn't like you last year and he don't like you this year. Mass backward, but it's the truth. I said, your issue isn't that she said it. Your issue is that that status hasn't changed. He didn't like you then and he don't like you now, but guess what? It doesn't matter. He doesn't need to. Do you like you? She's just standing there. She still shouldn't have said that. And I said, well, we can't walk backwards. We can't. Well, I said, as a matter of fact, get up and walk backwards and walk on back to the bus and keep going backwards till you get to that part and then, you know, bring it back. She said, I can't do that. I said, exactly. So leave it in the past. Where was I at? Because <laughs> I thought that was good. Yeah, okay. We was just talking about how drained she feels. And I, I wanted to say, and then I saw her later around, it was like, 1 30 and she was still mad i said you didn't let this take over your whole day yes because she shouldn't have done that i said wow your whole day has been you worrying about somebody telling somebody that you liked them last year girl that's not good it wasn't good hmm. every day we awake with a certain amount of mental emotional and physical energy that we spend throughout the day if we allow our emotions to deplete our energy we have no energy to change our lives or to give to others the way you see the world will depend on the emotions you are feeling. When you are angry, everything around you is wrong. Nothing is right. You blame everything, including the weather. Whether it's raining or the sun is shining, nothing pleases you. You ever been around somebody and nothing pleases them? You say, it's raining all day today. Okay, next day, it's too hot out here today. The sun is too bright. Like, does anything make you happy? You blame everything, including the weather. Whether it's, oh, look, whether it's raining or the sun is shining, nothing pleases you. And when you are sad, everything around you makes you cry. No, no. When you are sad, everything around you is sad and makes you cry. You see the trees and you feel sad. You see the rain and everything looks so sad. Perhaps you feel vulnerable and have a need to protect yourself because you don't know in which what moment someone will attack you. That's somebody who's had to grow up pretty rough. You do not trust anything or anyone around you. This is because you see the world with the eyes of fear. Imagine that the human mind is the same as your skin. You can touch healthy skin and feel it's wonder and feel it's wonderful. Your skin is made for perception and the sensation of touch is wonderful. Now imagine you have an injury and the skin gets cuts and infected. If you touch the infected sin, skin it is going to hurt you. So try to cover and protect your skin. You will not enjoy being touched because it hurts. Now imagine that all humans have this skin disease. Nobody can touch each other because it is going to hurt. Everyone has wounds on their skin, so the infection seems normal. The pain is also considered normal. We believe we are supposed to be that way. Can you imagine how we would behave with others if all the other humans in the world had this skin disease? Of course, we would hardly ever hug each other because it would be too painful. So we need to create a lot of distance between us. The human mind is exactly like this description of infected skin. Every human has an emotional body completely covered with infected wounds. Each wound is infected with an emotional poison. The poison of all the emotion that makes us suffer. Such as hate, anger, envy, and sadness. An action of injustice opens a wound in the mind and then we... And we react with emotional poison because of the concepts and beliefs we have about injustice and what is fair. The mind is so wounded and full of poison by the process of domestication that everyone, desire, everyone describes the wounded animal mind as normal. This is considered normal, but I can tell you it is not normal. Yes. So I'm going to stop now because it's been almost 30 minutes. Thanking you for your time. We will probably be two more days before we finish this amazing book. And then when we finish this book, we're going to go on because he has a fifth agreement. Looking forward to that. I'm going to tell you what it is. No spoiler alert now. The first agreement, be impeccable with your word. The second agreement, don't take anything personally. The third agreement, don't make any assumptions. And the fourth agreement, do your best at everything. Have an amazing afternoon. Of course, I would love if you would like this video, if you would share this video, and if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. The title of my channel is Breathing Underwater because life is always dunking your head under and you have to figure out how to breathe and not to die, how to survive when life is literally giving you tsunami after tsunami after tsunami. How do you survive? You survive by going within.
You survive by being the light you want to see in the world, by making the changes you need to make. That's how you survive. And that's how I'm surviving. And I want to help other people to survive. So like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you back here for the next part of the reading, The Four Agreements, later today. Bye-bye.